Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn about form validation and how to set up required fields. We'll cover the following topics. We'll start off with the required fields demo, then we'll learn how to create required fields on our form, and then we'll move into displaying the validation error messages. And finally, we'll wrap it all up with the full JSF page example. So we have a lot of good things in store for this video. Let's go ahead and dive in. Let's start off first by taking a look at a demo for the application. So I have a very basic form. I have two fields that are required, the last name and the email. Those two fields are required. First name is optional, so it's not required. So I'll just take a look at some of the fields here. And what I'll do first off is I'll just test it. I'll just hit submit and it's going to give me the error messages. So as I mentioned earlier, last name is required and also the email address is required. So I'll go back and I'll add some data for the first name, some data for the last name, and then hit submit and it says, okay, you're almost there, but email address is still required. So I still need to give a value for email address. Okay, great. I'll go ahead and enter my email address. Uh, my email address is John Doe at love to code.com. And then I'll hit submit. Okay, great. So this worked out fine. So we gave the information for last name and email address that passed the validation test and it took us to the actual confirmation page. So we see that our validation rules were working as desired up front. And now what we'll do is we'll actually learn how to create those required fields, like how to actually specify a field as being required. So here we have our normal um, snippet here from an HTML form. Uh, we'll have our input text. We'll have our value, student1.lastName. Uh, the next item here is the label. That's the actual label they'll use if there's a validation error. They'll tell you what the field name is based on the label. And also here we're going to say required equals true. So here, pretty straightforward, right? This field is required. Uh, if you don't give this value, then it defaults to being false. All right, great. Now, how do you display the error messages? So you saw earlier how the error messages were displayed in red in a bullet list at the top of the form. How do you set this up in the JSF page? Well, over on the right hand side, we have a little snippet of the source code. And so take a look at line 20. On line 20, we're going to make use of this new element called messages, H colon messages. What this will do is that this will actually check to see if there are any error messages. And if so, it'll display those error messages as a bullet list. And actually it's more than just error messages, basically any message, but here, uh, the case of error messages, we can also style the error messages. So we can set up a cascading style sheet style for the message. So here I'm going to define this class called error and up top on lines 10 through 12, we specify that style for error. So basically we're saying the color of the text is going to be red. Now this is regular S um, sorry, this is regular CSS work or cascading style sheet work. Um, you could define the styles in a separate file if you'd like, but here just to keep things simple, I put it in the same file as the uh, JSF, but the key item here is, in order to, to uh, display messages, you make use of the H colon messages element. All right, so let's pull this all together with an example. So in the top left, we're going to have our student form, first name, last name, email, uh, the two fields for last name and email, those are going to be required. In the center, we're going to have a managed bean. I'll call it student one. And then at the bottom, we'll have our student one response page. This is basically just our confirmation page uh, for the uh, user and uh, their email information. So those are the big pieces here that we'll have in the application. And I'll actually walk you through each one of those uh, coming up here. All right, so let's go ahead and move into Eclipse. We're going to make use of that existing project that we created in a previous video, Validate Demo. So this was already created in the previous video. What I like to do is I like to start off with actually creating that JSF form to read the uh, user input data. So I'll just right click, I'll go to new and I'll say new HTML file. 
the name of this file will be called student1form.xhtml. So student1form.xhtml. And then you can go ahead and click finish once that data is entered. Now, by default, they're going to give you a very basic template. Um, again, like in some of the previous videos, just go ahead and highlight everything and just delete all of that text. We're going to start from scratch. All right, so I have an empty file right now. Now I'm going to go through and drop in some elements here uh, for this JSF page. So I'll start off with the normal header information uh, referring to the various uh, JSF libraries that I'll use. And then I'll set up the head section where I simply just set up the title for this JSF page, student one registration form. And then I'll go ahead and put in just the body of the page along with the form. And note again how Eclipse will kind of do some of the code completion here for you for the end tags. So at this point I have a very basic page. I have a body and then inside of that I have a form. The form's empty. I need to add some elements to the form. So let me open up the window or expand the window a bit so I can have some room to work in, uh, get dirty, uh, move around a bit. And so what I'll do is I'll start off with the first name. So simply a first name um, label along with a text box for it. And remember, the first name's not required, so we're not going to put any special rules on it. And then I'll just kind of repeat this process here for last name. So I'll just drop in some code for last name. Now, for last name, things are a little bit different. So let's kind of walk through this a bit. So on lines 20 through 22. So the one new item here is that required equals true. And we saw that in the previous slide presentation, but here the last name field is required. So required equals true. And JSF will read that attribute and it'll perform validation on it when this form is processed. And I also want to just repeat this for email. So email is also going to have its field being set for required equals true for email. So again, just kind of stepping back, the last name and the email address on this form are required. And then finally, I'll just wrap up with our um, command button. So our command button, label of submit, and then the action, we're going to make use of this student one response. So remember, like in the previous videos, uh, we'll have to create a page called student one response.xhtml. But we'll get to that shortly. All right, so this all looks really good. So we have our basic form set up and uh, it's ready to go. So now let's go ahead and take care of some of our other work. And there's one more thing we have to do. We need to set up the uh, displaying of the error messages. So here I need to make use of the H colon messages. So this will, again, check for any error messages. If it finds some, it'll display and bullet list of all those error messages. And also I'm referring to this style class called error. Um, I haven't defined it yet in this file, so let's go ahead and move up top and define it um, in the header section. So moving into the header section, I'm simply going to define a um, style. And the style class is called error. And here we're simply setting the font color to be red. So that's how we we'll get all of our error messages in red. And again, you could make use of your own styles here or you could import a given style sheet, but here I'm just keeping it simple right now for our basic example. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to actually create our managed bean uh, to actually hold our form data, right? So moving back over here into the window, I go to source. Um, actually, I need to create a package so I'm going to go right click new and I'll choose package because I want to put the managed bean into a love to code package here. So for the actual name of the package, I'll call com.lovetocode.jsf.validate demo. And that's the actual name of my package that I'm going to use for my managed bean. And once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and click finish. It'll create the package. Um, that's kind of what it looks like here on the screen. 
And now this is where I'm gonna place my managed bean. So on the package, I'll just right click, I'll say new class. The actual name of the class that I'm gonna use is called student one. So student one, I'll keep all the other defaults here in this example. And once I'm happy with this, then I'll go ahead and click the finish button in the bottom right. Okay, great. So we have this very basic class here called student one. Let me just expand the window. This is going to be our managed bean. So I give the managed bean annotation. And again, we've done all this before in the previous videos. Just make sure I do a proper import here for Java X dot faces dot bean managed bean. So I'll choose the first option here. All right, so great. So the imports taken care of. Now we're going to define our fields. We're going to have three fields here. Uh, the first field is going to be for first name. Uh, then we'll have last name and then we'll have email. So those are our fields that we're going to use to capture uh, form data. Now what we need to do is create our no argument constructor. So again, we create the constructor. It has the same name as the class. So public student one. Okay, and it just does nothing for now. So give me some time to give us some working room here. And the next thing we want to do is create our getter and setter methods. And again, just like the previous videos, we're going to make use of the Eclipse trick to just right click, choose source, and then select generate getter and setters. Eclipse will bring up the dialog. I'll go through and I'll select all of those items here, email, first name, and last name, except keep all the other defaults and then select OK. All right, great. So Eclipse did a lot of work here. Let me just kind of move, move around here and just take a look at everything that was completed. So here, um, Eclipse went through it, created the getters and setters for first name. It did a similar thing here for last name and finally for email. So again, the basic things that we need to do for our uh, JSF beans. So we have our managed bean created, we have our no argument constructor created, and we also have our getter and setter methods in place. So this bean's ready to go. Good job. All right, and the next thing we need to do here is uh, create the confirmation page or the response page. So I'll just do a right click. I'll say new HTML file. The name of this file is going to be called student one response dot X HTML. And once you have that entered, you can go ahead and click the finish button in the bottom, right? Again, they give you a lot of template stuff. Go ahead and select all of it and hit the delete key on your keyboard just to wipe it out. And what I'll do is I'll actually go through and drop in some code that I had uh, previously. And the confirmation page is not that much of a big deal um, because, you know, not doing anything really special here. Just here's the body section. On line 12, we simply display the student's first name and last name. And then we display the email. And again, we're using the managed beans and the JSF expression language for that. That's pretty much it. So that's our confirmation page. So now we can simply run the application and uh, test it out. So for our form here, uh, first name, last name, email, I'll just hit submit. It's going to give me the uh, validation errors because last names required and emails required. I'll go through and I'll enter some data here for first name, John Doe. I'll try and see if I can sneak by, hit a submit, but it's still catching me on email. So that value is required. So I still need to give an actual email address for this form. So here I'll just enter John Doe at love to code.com. Now hit submit. And everything works out as desired, right? So now we have John Doe and his email address is John Doe at love to code.com. So we enter the required fields for last name and email address. Good job. This looks really good. 
All right, so let's go ahead and summarize this video. We started off with our application demo. Then we learned how to create the required fields. Next, we covered how to display the validation error messages. And then finally, we pulled it all together with a full JSF page example. So great job. You learned the basics here on handling validation rules for required fields. Well, this wraps up the video. In this video, we learn how to validate JSF forms with required fields. Stay tuned. I have a lot of more validation rules to cover, and we'll do a deep dive on those in each separate video.